Hi there, I'm Kathleen and I am Ms. Artastic and welcome to How to Teach Art for Classrooms and Homeschool Families uh, or Homeschooling. Uh, in this webinar, I'm going to be diving in on your exact plan that you need to follow in order to effectively teach art to kids in either a classroom setting or a homeschooling program. So let's dive in on this webinar and let's make some art. Welcome to this webinar. I am so grateful that you have decided to take the time out of your day to join me in this webinar. I am thrilled that you are here. So I just thought that before we start the webinar, I would just introduce myself a little bit just in case you have and haven't met me before or this is our first encounter together. I am Kathleen and I am Ms. Artastic. I have been developing resources for the Ms. Artastic universe for over a decade, um, whether it's on my, well, it started off with a blog, the MsArtastic.com blog, and then that evolved into the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store, where teachers were are and were um, looking for and finding my resources to use in their classrooms from my elements of art programs to principles of design, artists and art history themes, um, ceramics and sculpture sketchbook, um, and so much more, either individual projects um, that they could use, tangible ones in their classrooms or units. Um, also, there are things like um, different worksheets like grid draws and directed draws and write and draws and so much more. So that's kind of where it evolved. Now it's kind of grown through the years and by grown I don't mean that there's a team it's just me who runs absolutely literally everything um, on Ms. Artastic from all the design to the creation the, like everything is done by me my blogs my websites um, all my graphics um, all my clip art that's included in stuff like I design it all so um, my blog my podcast this YouTube channel the editing, everything. I am. I am wear every single hat for every single part of Ms. Artastic. So, anyways, my Teachers Pay Teachers store evolved from the blog into Teachers Pay Teachers store, and then I started a YouTube channel a couple years ago. And you're watching it, um, perhaps, um, and maybe you've subscribed. Um, if not, you should definitely check it out because it is a humongous resource of hundreds of um, both drawing tutorials and art tutorials for both pre-K and kids, but also it provides um, different uh, webinars for teachers and for homeschooling families or parents who want to help their kids create art. So it's a wealth of free information. And then same with my um, podcast, the Ms. Artastic podcast. You can listen to it on any podcast player. I have that also as a free resource to help out families. And I also have a newsletter that comes out every week. Um, if you're a subscriber of that, you'll know that it is a treasure trove of ideas. I also try to do monthly freebies um, and so much more. So I create a, literally all of it. Um, and my focus is helping um, people, helping people who are in the position of teaching art to kids do the job of actually teaching art to kids. So I design art education resources for those people who are interested in teaching art to kids. And I am so excited to see where it grows. I have huge goals. I would love to do um, more teaching to kids in other ways. For instance, last year I opened up the artastickids.com website. Um, that is another part of my world where I offer um, online streaming art lessons and art courses for kids at home. So if you have a kid at home who wants to learn how to create art, Artastic Kids is the membership and website for you to check out. There's a blog on there with ideas, so much more. And I also have the Artastic Collective art curriculum at artasticcollective.com. Um, there is my, that is my fully planned art curriculum for teachers to use, art teachers specifically to use in their classrooms. I also have Art Teacher Academy, uh, which is my professional development program for art teachers, and so much more. So really, I am fully invested in doing um, everything art education. So from Ms. Artastic to Artastic Kids to the Artastic Collective, 
that is who I am and what I do. And again, I'm so looking forward to seeing it grow. I don't know where it goes. Maybe one day I'll publish a book um, for how to do drawings or how to make art or perhaps, I don't know, my YouTube channel will continue to grow and this will be kind of a larger thing for people to use. I just really want to inspire people and kids to to create art, to explore their own human condition, to explore who they were. Because here's the thing, here's my story. I used to be that kid. I used to be the kid who would sit there and draw and dive into my imagination, but I needed a lot of encouragement and resources to kind of figure out how to do it. And back in the early 90s, it was kind of hard um, to find these things. It was very expensive because obviously the internet didn't exist and there was no such thing as finding an artastic kid's website to find art lessons to learn art at home, right? There was no internet, so... Mm. <laughs> and it was very expensive to do art lessons on, um, in person and to be honest, they were, the ones I took, I did take, they were really boring. I just remember like, they were not enthusiastic, there was no energy, they weren't making anything that I wanted to create. I was just honestly stuck at doing value skills the whole time and like, which is, I agree with you need to learn, but they could be fun. They could be fun. There is a way to learn traditional art without um, making it so boring for kids that they want to disengage. And so that's kind of why I started all this because I'm like, you know what, I, I'm so passionate about art, I love art, and I do art professionally in my own time. Um, but I also, with this, um, I try to encourage, inspire people, and especially kids, people to encourage kids to create art in a more holistic way that actually inspires them and engages them, but also to, I want to inspire kids to create and follow their dreams and dive into those cool things that are happening in their imagination. So that way, the creativity crushed out of their souls, not shoved into that box that we all desperately want to get out of, right? We all feel like we're being crushed and stuck into a box of, con you know, conforming to whatever we're supposed to be doing with our lives. But who really wants to live like that? I would think it's amazing if we're all empowered to just explore our own ideas and our imagination and whatever we love. Be passionate about something. All right, so that's kind of who I am. <laughs> I know it's kind of kind of big, but I feel like you need to understand where I come from and so you can understand my why of why I want to help you. All right, so we're going to be talking about how to teach art for classrooms and homeschooling. I'm going to give you my my steps and how to implement this into your life if you're looking to understand it a little bit more deeply so that way you can really inspire and engage kids, whether they are kids in your classroom or your own kids at home if you're doing homeschooling. At the end of this webinar, I'll also let you know about my new program that's going to help you um, get ideas and resources for actually implementing art into your world that are engaging, inspiring, and meet curricular standards. Like That is what we're looking for, right? We want kids to be excited, so we'll talk about that at the very end, but right now, I'm going to go in and dive into this webinar, so if you need to... Um, Take notes, you can take notes right now, grabbing you know, something to write on and something to write with. Something to write on, something to write with. Um, take some notes, jot them down, and then I will um, let dive in. So if you need to hit pause, hit pause. If not, we're gonna get started. So um, first we're going to, first step where we're going to be teaching art to kids is that we need to get ideas for what we're going to teach. And to be honest, the most important part is thinking about what the kids are actually interested in, right? Because we can, if we plan around kids' own interests or student interests or kids' interests, then it's going to make them want to create. They're going to want to engage. They're going to want to create it. It's going to be interesting to them. It's going to fire them up. It's going to spark them creativity and that is what we need to do right we want to spark creativity we want to fire them up fire is hopefully burning bursting <laughs> out of my hands all right oh don't you just love how technology has advanced that I can be doing this with you right now because I could not do this in even a handful of years ago. It was so much more challenging, but now I can help you. I'm so excited about it. All right, 
So planning around the interests because my friend, we can still integrate curricular standards even if we're planning around their interests, right? Because we can teach an element of art lesson, or sorry, element of art lesson, like say line or value or color or shape or form, but the theme or subject matter within that element of art line or value lesson is around the student's interests, right? If they are super stoked about unicorns, you could do a unicorn line art artwork, right? instead of doing it whatever you're interested in, right? Because we, if we're making, we're trying to be making, well, okay, here's a backup. Art is supposed to be meaningful, right? It's supposed to be meaningful to the artist. If you're the instructor, you're teaching them how to make art. So it's not necessarily meaningful for you, although it might be, but it's primarily we're helping them navigate creating art that is meaningful to them. And that is super important if we want them to be engaged. But we can also teach them art that is meaningful to them, that maybe dives in on their interests or their own human condition, but also meets curricular standards. So thinking about how we can teach an art lesson, right? How we can talk about art or view art or go to a museum or visit one virtually, but also, and you know, hit those curricular standards, but also how can we blend it with their interests. Hmm. Is there an art show that's happening around that maybe something in that art show is to do with their interests that we could go look at and observe or look at online at images? Is there an artist that you can introduce that would meet the interests, the current interests of your students? That would be really cool, right? Like for instance, if they're really uh, big on graffiti, maybe um, introducing them to Jean-Michel Basquiat, he started off as a street artist and that would be a great way to incorporate art history into it. Then he also you know, became pretty significant in popular culture, was friends with a lot of the significant um, uh, pop stars and famous people at the time if they're really interested in that kind of stuff. He was kind of like the influencer back in the day. Um, but so if you want to, you know, you can make, think about how to make connections to make art history relevant with them, but then also teach about it as an artist. It's kind of like the key to the door, right? We want to spark their curiosity and make it interesting. And then we can go deeper into the other parts of an artist or an art movement, etc., or element of art line, right? So we got to think about how to pair it, like kind of like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? Not my favorite sandwich, to be honest. And it kind of makes me want to barf just looking at it. I don't know why. I don't know why. I, my husband thinks I'm absolutely crazy. You probably do too, but it's just not my thing. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I like peanut butter and I like raspberry jam, for instance, but I do not like them together. Okay, but you understand the metaphor. One, you gotta take, you know, the peanut butter in order to make the jam, the peanut butter jelly sandwich, you gotta have a slice of peanut butter, slice of bread with peanut butter and a slice of bread with <laughs> jam or this curricular standards and student interests, and we're gonna smash them together! And then boom, you get a sandwich! <laughs> that's my metaphor for this. But that's kind of what I want you to, I know, I want that to be top of mind for you, for instance. All right, so number one was to plan around their interests. Number two is to start off with a killer hook, a sick hook, something radical. We don't say rad anymore, but do you remember when rad was awesome? Yeah. Yeah, if you don't, and you're younger than me, <laughs> I'm sad. <laughs> I'm watching those years go by, I'm like, ah! <laughs> oh, go away, age. Um, anyways, radical, yeah, okay. Um, anyways, moving on, start off with a hook, and then we want to use the hook to um, capture their Im imagination and get them fired up for the lesson, right? We want to excite their, their creativity. They might have had, who knows what has happened in the day prior to this art lesson, and so we need to change things up and fire them up for learning. So some ideas for hooks, you could do a video hook that talks about the subject matter, 
You can create a slideshow or a video that teaches about it. You can maybe find one on YouTube if you want. There's so many, so many YouTube channels. Um, you can do go to a museum either in person or online. There are lots of virtual museum visits or explorations nowadays. A lot of museums put their art online at full high quality um, because it's been uh, hundreds of years since the artists have passed away. So now it's in the public domain, so they kind of have to. Um, so you can go view um, art for free online, which might make it easy if you have if you live nowhere near it or you just can't do a museum field trip with a whole class. That's too much. And that is a good option. Um, and then that can, you know, lead into like, oh, what kind of elements of art do we see? Can we observe blah, 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 or whatever we're, we're focusing on, right, as our, for our unit. Um, and another one could be that you do a feely box. So you could put in a feely bag or a feely box, put in, say, you have an art lesson coming up, it's going to be clay, maybe put in some, a ball of clay and some clay tools in there, no needle tools, mm -mm 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 -mm. sharpie, sharpie, um, <laughs> rib, you know, a wood tool, a piece of clay, a stick, or if it's, um, say, uh, they're doing crayons and film markers, um, but they're doing frogs, maybe you put in like a frog toy, a uh, frog, <laughs> uh, whatever, you know, things related to frogs, maybe something slimy to represent frogs, like slime, um, or uh, you put in like the wax crayons and the felt markers and the feeling box. Okay, anyways, you take your, they don't look, they can't see what's going on, right? So you gotta stick your hands in, touch everything, and then they can pull it out and make a guess uh, at what's in there and how it might allow them to make a prediction, right? Make a prediction for what the art lesson will be about. If you want to incorporate writing, they can, on a post-it note, write down, I predict the art lesson will be about, and then they can either do a think, pair, share, or go stick their prediction on the whiteboard, or if it's doing homeschooling, they can just put it in front of them, and then you guys can share out and see if anybody got the guess of what we'll be learning about in art today. Um, you can also do an unboxing. I love to do an unboxing. You can just take an old Amazon box, bag, whatever. Get a box. Um, stick in the different pieces of what you're going to be using to make and the mediums and materials or maybe related picture books or nonfiction books related to the topic. Um, and then you're going to, the example, um, you can pull that out at the very end as a big reveal. So you're going to put it all in there right inside your box and then you're going to have kids gather whether it's in a classroom or homeschool and be like okay we're going to do an unboxing of what we're going to create today so you're going to pull out the first medium and then maybe you're going to pull out the paper and maybe you're going to pull out the second medium uh, and then you're going to pull out a picture book that's related to the topic or a non-fiction book related to the topic and then you can explore that anybody have any predictions of what the art lesson will be about <gasps> oh those are some great guesses all right, let's see what it is. Final reveal. We pull out the example and now we get them excited and ready for the art lesson. Instead of going, all right, this is what we're doing today. I need to dive right in right in. Just slowly unboxing it. It's going to really excite them. And plus it's kind of speaking their language because that is a huge thing. I think I don't watch unboxings, but people do. So um, you can also make a puzzle. Like you cut up the example, like make a photocopy of it and then cut it up or something to do with the subject matter of what you're going to create. Cut it up and make a puzzle and have to put the puzzle back together. Um, you can even make it a race to see what they're going to be creating today. Um, you can have a creativity challenge that's related to the topic. So you can present a creativity challenge. They do it. It's a super short activity. And then we go, it leads into maybe the art lesson, or you can do a picture book related to the topic. So you can read a book and then talk about it and then use that as an intro into the lesson or maybe a poem. You can do a poem as a hook. There are just really endless ways to do hooks, but think of a hook as part of the art lesson to really fire them up and ignite them for learning. All right, so now that we're done our hook number two, um, we're going to go into number three, which is exploration. So once you're done planning or other interests, you have a hook all theme, think thought out, think out, thought out, um, you're going into an exploration mode. So now you're going to explore maybe some, either the topic or some of the art mediums that we're gonna use, um, or both together as an exploration activity. So you're just gonna give them like a one sentence prompt 
or drawing idea and then you're just going to give them the art mediums and um, let them explore like draw one of the stages of a frog's life cycle if you're learning about frog life cycles for instance or lifestyle or life cycles in general draw one stage of the frog's life cycle now in your art project you're planning on using oil pastels or and watercolor paints so you're just going to give them that prompt and a piece of paper um, and those mediums and let them explore them on their own just kind of like get warmed up and just see the potential of the mediums and how they work together you're not going to give any instruction it's just self student or child directed um, exploration let them explore their own creativity and personal interest that way you're going to cover some curricular standards when you do that all right then number six is to design and plan the art lesson so now now we've done that part the next thing you'll be doing is teaching the actual art lesson and now you're going to have to actually do some a bit more planning right so you're going to have to uh think about what the artwork's going to look like so for instance you got to think about in your mind what is this art project going to look like is it going to look like this okay is it going to be a toucan is it going to be a sloth is it going to be a stegosaurus that explores the elements of art line? So like what, this, you got to make a picture in your mind of what it, they, it is that they're going to learn, right? If they're going to learn the elements of art line, like what are they going to learn? Are they going to learn, like are they going to make some, if it's, you know, little kids, maybe we can make emojis. If we can do some felt marker painting with different lines in the background. Um, maybe if you're doing watercolor paints, they can do some wildflowers, um, do wet on wet exploration and techniques, and then do some line exploration on top after it dries. Or maybe for the little guys, you can do more of a wet on wet background. And then once it dries, you can do wet on dry flowers, right? So thinking about in your mind what that art lesson is going to be. What is that art project going to look like? So you gotta make that up and then you're gonna make the example. So now you need to go ahead and create the example so they can kind of get an idea of what it is that they are going to make today. What is the example going to look like? So you gotta come up with your example. Um, and then you're gonna have to come up with your, make a lesson plan, right? In your lesson plan, you're gonna have a statement that talks about like what it is they're gonna be doing, um, the materials and mediums needed for that. Uh, I like to put in um, the steps of instruction from start to finish. I like to put in any assessment or participation strategies or my hook. I like to put that into my lesson plan. Um, and of course, you need to insert your standards so that way you can say that in this lesson, they are going to meet these curricular standards or content pieces or competencies, whatever you call them. You're also going to want to create things like a rubric um, appropriate for the ages that you're teaching, any assessment, um, any reflections such as, you know, uh, reflections on mood or tone or you know uh, relating to personal interests or explorations any reflections about how they've improved or met any of their personal goals um, any reflections on um, uh, like artist statements for example that is sometimes part of the curricular standards they want to see an artist artist statement so practicing how to write an artist statement um, you might want to make any worksheets to go with it like any step-by-step -step draws or any step-by-step -step how to create so thinking about all the different worksheets and handouts that you need to create to go along to teach an uh, art lesson. So that's your next step is of doing all the behind the scenes planning. And now, once you've done that, you can go into the next step, which is to teach. I forget what number I'm on. It's, it's number one, two, three, four, five. Number five is to teach the art lesson. So now that you've done your planning, you get to do the fun thing, which is actually implement it and teach. So teaching, I like to teach the different steps of how to create. So I usually typically start off by showing my example, whatever that example might be. Um, and then I'll be like, okay, so we're gonna create in this art lesson, we're gonna be exploring the elements of art line. I might have already preloaded them by showing a video or a slideshow that explicitly teaches about the element of art line. Um, and then I might do my exploration and then I'll do my hook. So maybe we practice drawing different types of lines and like, oh, can you make some lines that show mood? What do excited lines look like? What about thick and thin lines? Can lines show movement? 
Like what if a line shows that something's bouncing or flying? And we do that as our exploration. And then we're gonna teach them, like, all right, now that we understand about the um, element of our line, we learned about it a little bit, and we did our little experimentation, now we're going to make an artwork that explores the element of our line. So we're gonna create a stegosaurus using just felt markers and our wax crayons. And yes, this is all felt markers and wax crayons. I know it looks painterly. I got so many little tricks in my pocket. <laughs> all right, um, we're gonna make our stegosaurus and we're gonna explore the element of our line, okay. And then we're gonna now do the seven steps. And I usually demonstrate right in front of them how to do the steps. Um, if you're doing it in front of a whole classroom or even in homeschool families, typically what I like to do is I like to do a couple steps with them. I demonstrate first, so I say, you watch me, then you do. So I do a few steps and then I let them go. And while they're going on those first few steps, I'm floating around, visiting every table or helping the kids that I'm teaching um, to create. And then once I see that we're all, some kids are done those steps, um, some kids are nearing that completion of that, those steps, then I go back to front and say, all right, stop and listen. Next, we're going to learn the next step. So here are the next steps. And I, I'm like, it's okay if you're not there yet. But pay attention because eventually you will be at this stage and you need to know how to do this. We're going to stop and listen no matter where you're at. You can still work at your own pace. That's okay. There's no rush. But we're just going to watch the next steps. So then I implement, I teach the next steps, um, and then I let them go back to work, all right? So then they go back to work, and then we continue this process until we are completed or until they have watched all the steps, and then I can um, show them. Typically, I also give like a little handout that has the steps as well, so that way if they forget, they have a little reference beside them, so they can be like, all right, I forgot, but oh, here it is. I can just see the steps and then continue on my own or ask a friend. Um, I also like to write a first, then, and next after on my board, um, so that way they can um, be in more independent and see what they need to do themselves in case they forget or if they missed a day or they were, you know, sometimes we're listening, but then we start daydreaming while we're listening and they can be like, oh no, what am I supposed to do? Oh, first, then, next, after. I love doing that as well. And also it's really great for our students um, who need those visual cues it, and it helps really everybody, but especially those kids as well. <laughs> that way we're all on the same page. We can all be successful. First, then, next, after. I love having that. Um, anyways, so then we're going to teach it and they're going to learn. Now, once we're all done creating, and for me, um, I'm big on starting off by putting our name on the back. That's always the first step. Name on the back! And then, to make sure everybody has their name on the back, I want you to go and look at the person beside you, and you're going to show them your name on the back. And, if, and you're going to write, draw a little tiny happy face beside the other person's name. So that way, you guys should both have a happy face, and you have two people double-checking that all names are on the back before we start. Anyways, now that we're all done, we're going to go to the next step, which I think is number six. <sighs> I have terrible short-term memory. <laughs> number six is implement um, any reflections or small group conferencing or peer-to-peer -peer conferencing or three stars and a wishes with a buddy or any one-to-one -one assessment. So now that the artwork's done, this is when we do our reflections. We implement those reflection sheets we've already made. Um, we can do assessment, they can do self-assessment. You could do peer-to-peer -peer assessment, peer feedback forms, right? You can go to different buddies and say, hey, what do you think about this? You could do three stars and a wish with a buddy so they can get into pairs. Um, and then that person, they can look at each other's artwork. They're gonna give three stars um, and a wish to the other person. Um, so three things they did really well and one wish of something that they wish they could do a little better or and work on for the next artwork. Um, they can also do one-to-one -one assessment, so you can do a one-to-one -one conferencing with your students, so you can go over and you know, pull one student at a time or pull, pull one child at a time or talk to one child at a time if it's homeschooling and say, all right, we can talk about what they did well um, and then you can go through your rubric together and then come up with um, assessments that way and talk about the work and then also it's a great time to think of helping them come up with a goal for their next artwork so that they can make you know, 1% incremental uh, improvements in their art, right? We're not trying to be master artists right from the beginning. We're only looking to 
do our own personal best with every art that we artwork that we make, right? One percent better every single time, helping us get up the ladder. Okay, that's all we're looking for. We're looking for personal development and improvement. Just looking for kids to make those one percent incremental steps to getting better, right? That's our. That's what lifelong journeys are all about. We're not expecting anybody to be a professional artist out the gate, right? NBA players are still practicing every day, right? They go to practices to get better, right? It's 1% incremental improvements that are made. How can you get 1% better in our next artwork that we do together? What could your one goal be so you can get a little bit better next time and work towards your own goals and then continue to improve? That's all we're looking for from kids. And I think that's really important to, to think about when we are assessing kids. We're not looking, we shouldn't be comparing apples and or you know, student A and student B. We should be com thinking about did that individual, right, grading the individual, did that particular student or my child make a 1% improvement? If they did and they grew and they met the curricular standards, that's, that is ex exceeding the expectations, right? They have met the expectations. Um, they have tried their best. They are making, gro showing growth and improvement. And I think that as a goal for absolutely everybody that is existing right now, that is a great goal is to get a little bit better no matter what you're doing. And that's a goal for like hockey players. I don't watch sports, but I know they go to practices. They do. They go to practices. Why? So they can get 1% better than somebody else. That's the whole point of practices. They're the best. They are the best apparently, right? They're the best, but they're still practicing. All right. So that's my, <laughs> my tidbit there. All right, so now you can do all this yourself, right? You can go ahead and you can do your planning around their interests. You can survey students. I love surveying them to find out what their interests are. Like, hey, what are you interested in? Write your current interests on a post-it note. You can collect the post-it notes. Um, you can just take a piece of paper around with you and jot down, hey, you pop by each table. Hey, what are you interested in right now? I'm just taking stuff, doing a survey. I wanna make art projects around what you're actually interested in this year. So maybe you can like give me one thing that you're really, really stoked about or interested in or you find radical, <laughs> just kidding, stoked about this year, let me know. And then I'm gonna try to work in some of your interests into what we're gonna make this year, right? And be excited because if you're excited, they're gonna be excited. If you walk around like this and you're like, hey, I'm just wondering like what you guys are interested in it, so I can make your um, art lessons that are like around your interests, they're not gonna be interested or engaged. Um, so you got remember, put on that face, put on that face. Even if you're not feeling it, even if in your personal life, personal life things aren't going that great, and there's some things going on and it's kind of sucky, it's okay. Put pretend for the moment, because doing our jobs. <laughs> all right, so um, yeah, so anyways, you can do all this yourself, right? You are totally capable and can plan around your students or your children's interests. Um, you can think about different hooks to capture their imaginations. You can go ahead and create all your lesson plans and your examples and your rubrics and your assessments and think about different themes and learn about different things to implement and do the research to implementing your artworks into your classroom and a variety of different themes and art mediums and um, learn, you know, you can learn on YouTube how to use these different mediums and so that way you can teach them to kids or buy a bunch of different books or take some courses, no problem. Um, and then make all your examples and your worksheets and any video hooks that are, and stuff that you want. You can learn about the elements of art and principles of design and artists and art history um, and so, and so much more and then teach it. Or you can sit back and relax and do the teaching part only. And I, my friend, I will let you know how that is possible. So the way this works is that you can enjoy just doing the teaching part and then have access to an art resource library where you will find new bundles of art projects every single month added to an art resource library. So it'll come with um, your hooks, it will come with your um, art projects. So two art projects, one for a primary, or primary level and one for more of an intermediate level or elementary level. So K to two and three, a three to grade five 
K K K one two three four five in the other one. It'll give you a nice task cards to use as additional explorations um, that they can do on their own. I'm gonna also provide a when you're done activity and uh, directed drawing also under the theme. And so this is through my new program, introducing art project membership. The membership that is designed for teachers and homeschooling families. I will do all the research and I'm gonna do all the planning and then you get to, I will do all the example making that will make all the videos to uh, excite them about what the topic is they're gonna be learning and then you get to do the fun thing which is just the teaching. And that's going to allow you to go from a, um, you know, busy mom or dad or grandparent, whoever's doing the homeschooling guardian, whoever's homeschooling and having to do all the research, it's gonna eliminate all that time trying to figure out um, how to design some art lessons or if you're a teacher, trying to figure out another subject, planning for yet another subject to do, um, implement in your classroom. You know, making all the examples and all the lesson plans and all the worksheets at work you know, just even taking the time to go online and look at these things, whether it's on Pinterest or Facebook groups, they're begging for freebies and then they suck. So it's going to eliminate all the stress of having to do all the planning and I will do all the researching. I will do all the planning for you, for all different themes, for the elements of art, principles of design, artists and art history movements. And I will create all the resources and all you have to do is the fun part, which is teaching to go from a much um, a busier to, to allow you to transform from a very busy person who's spending all their free time researching and making all the examples to a much more calmer, happier, stress-free you who gets to do what they love, which is teach and have more free time. So let's dive in and take a look at what will come with the Art Project Membership. Alright, so let's dive in on what's included with Art Project Membership. Alright, let's dive in on what's included with Art Project Membership. So with Art Project Membership, you're going to get all the tools that you need to feel less stressed and overwhelmed. Welcome to Art Project Membership, your premier destination for exclusive themed art projects and resources meticulously crafted for teachers and homeschool parents alike. Every month, Art Project Academy... Alright, let's dive in on what is included with Art Project Membership. Get all the tools you need to feel less stressed and overwhelmed. Welcome to our project, a membership, your premier destination for exclusive themed art projects and resources meticulously crafted for teachers and homeschool parents alike. Every month, our project membership enriches your teaching toolkit, ensuring you're equipped with freshly innovative content to ignite your students or your children's creativity and passion for art. With your Art Project membership, each month unlocks a treasure trove of artistic possibilities. Two brand new exclusive art projects, never before, never before seen art projects exclusively available to members. Each month you'll receive one project tailored for K-2 to and another for grades 3-5. to These projects are ideal for split grade classes, adapting to various student abilities, or for providing challenges to your budding artists. Homeschool parents will find these projects are a perfect fit for children of different ages, ensuring everyone's engaged and learning. These are not in any other program or store of mine and are exclusive to APM Art Project membership. You'll also get themed, fully planned projects, so you can say goodbye to the hassle of planning, as my projects are not only themed to spark interest and excitement, but come fully prepared with everything you need, with video tutorials that you can follow along with um, as I guide you through each step 
through the art making project, making implementation into your classroom or homeschool setting a breeze. And it'll also come with a comprehensive digital download so you can equip yourself with an extensive range of digital resources, including your lesson plans, rubrics, easy assessment, artist statements, and more, all designed to enrich your teaching experience and enhance your students' learning. You'll also get a monthly directed drawing tutorial so you can complement your monthly theme with a dedicated directed drawing tutorial designed to refine your students' skills and bolster their confidence in their artistic abilities. Each month will also provide a captivating video hook designed to pique your students' interest and curiosity and reel them into the world of learning and creativity. You'll also get creative task cards. So whether it's drawing art or art, my task cards offer bite-sized challenges and prompts perfect for stimulating your students' imagination and keeping their creative juices flowing. You'll also get, I know there's so much, it's crazy, right? But you'll also get art activities for fast finishers. So you'll keep your Swift artists engaged with special activities for each month. Early, ideal for early finishers, bell ringers, or extending learning beyond the typical art lesson. These activities ensure that every moment is an opportunity for artistic exploration. My favorite is using them for fast finishers. Oh yeah. And finally, there's also a lovely bonus, which is the exclusive members only form, ideal for collaboration. There's a teacher section and there's a homeschool section and there's also a Q&A so you can talk with me and get help at any time. So ensure that you join our Project Academy today and transform the way you teach. Elevate your students' learning experience with our meticulously designed exclusive resources and watch as their creativity and love for art flourishes under your guidance. Become a part of a community where art education is not just taught, but celebrated. So you can join me now at Art Project Project Academy by Googling Art Project Academy, clicking the link below the video, or scanning the QR code on the screen so that way you can join right now for a low monthly membership fee.